So, you want to become a millionaire in your 20s. Well, these are the five lessons that, when implemented, will not only put you on the path towards becoming a millionaire, but also allow you to level up as a person. You see, it's one thing to become rich later in life, but becoming rich in your teens and even 20s will unlock a level to life that you didn't even know existed. And that's not simply because of the money, but because of the person you need to become to earn that money. I mean, take it from me, I made my first million dollars in profit at the age of 18. And honestly, the biggest lesson I've learned in the last few years is that there are truly a million ways to make a million dollars. And that is why the first lesson is don't be afraid to try making money in different ways. Now, I told you that there are a million ways to make a million dollars, and that is true, but it's not the whole truth. You see, about 999,000 of those are unnecessarily difficult, maybe even more than that. Yet, there are more than enough ways to make money that, although may not be easy, are very, very, very simple. Now, I've made millions of dollars through half a dozen ways, and having been in the space for 10 years now, I've seen so many different things work for different people. One of the biggest mistakes people make is trying to force their way with one money-making method. And that's not to say that you don't need consistency and tenacity when it comes to making money, but you sometimes also need to realize that not every method will work for every person. And sometimes it's better to simply figure out what works best for you rather than keep hitting your head against the wall trying to do a method that maybe works for someone else. And that's why I keep saying, don't be afraid to make money in many different ways. Try different things, acquire different skills, and eventually put many different skills together. Why do you think I keep telling you just to put one foot forward in front of the other? It's because at your stage, you need to always be doing and always be learning. And before being able to earn your first million dollars, you need to earn your first hundred thousand dollars. And before your first hundred thousand dollars, you need to earn your first ten thousand dollars. And earning your first $10,000 all starts with earning your first $1,000 online. And if you thought there were many ways to make a million, there are even more ways to make a thousand. And that's why I've distilled it to its most basic element. So much so that I've set out to prove that anyone can make their first $1,000 online with this system. And to prove exactly that, I've launched Digital Launchpad. For just $37 a month or 74 cents per day, if you go for the yearly plan and get a 40% discount, you will get access to everything you need to make your first thousand dollars. You're immediately gonna have three different pathways taught by three different experts. And you're also gonna unlock an extra four bonus programs. And additionally, for the rest of this year, we are launching one additional program every single month. That's gonna teach you either how to make money online, network better, train better, dress better, invest better. As I said, for only 74 cents a day, if you go for the yearly plan, this is the best way to make money online bar none. So for the price of lunch every single month, you can get access to the most fail-proof protocol when it comes to making money online. And when I say anyone can make money with this, I mean anyone, because that's exactly what 20,000 students who have joined this year have proved. So now that you've learned the first lesson, which is there are a million ways to make a million dollars, the next lesson you need to internalize if you want to become a millionaire in your 20s is that you don't actually have business problems. You have personal problems manifesting in your business. And let me explain what I mean. You see, a lot of the times, especially earlier on in your career, people struggle to get to the next level. And when they struggle, they look for reasons, except there aren't really any reasons. They're just scapegoats. Oh, the business model doesn't scale. Oh, my niche doesn't work. Oh, there just aren't any good products. Whatever they say the problem is, it usually isn't. Instead, the problem is much more deep rooted because the problem is with themselves. And I know what that's like because I had this in the beginning. You know, it's funny, when I was first getting started in business, I thought that my young age had something to do with the fact that I was struggling. And then I had to have a very sobering conversation with myself and realize that it wasn't my age. That was just an excuse I was making. It was the fact that I did not understand my market well enough. I did not understand how to put together a good offer. So whether that be a good service or a good product at the time, I had a service-based business. And it's so funny because one day I woke up and I decided 
I am gonna take full fucking responsibility for everything that's happening in my life. And when that happened, 90 days later, I was making $15,000 a month profit at the age of 17. It's very funny how that works, isn't it? Because 90 days prior, I thought it was all my age, but 90 days later, it seemed like it was no problem at all. It's not like all of a sudden I grew that much, you know, my face aged, nothing. No, it was all in my head. It was simply a personal problem or a personal belief or a personal worldview that was manifesting in the business. And that's why I knew I had to change my own ways in order to progress in my business. And that was just one example. There was many other examples. I knew I had to change my own ways in order to progress in my business. And so I'll give you a few more examples to illustrate this point. For one, I knew I wouldn't be able to focus as well if my phone was on the desk next to me. So that's why from the age of 17 until 21, I did not check my phone for the first four to five hours a day. And in order to make sure I didn't slip up, I would actually put my phone in a vault I had in my house. And then I would have a second burner phone that only had essentials like Audible and Spotify or Uber on there. And in the same way, I knew that I focused better and felt better if I worked out first thing in the morning. In fact, my health had such a profound impact on my business that there was a direct correlation between the months I was on top of my fitness and diet and the months that I made the most money. So obvious, but sometimes you don't see it in the moment. And that's why I had to create systems that made sure I was always on top of my game. Because if I didn't, then my non-business habits would begin to affect my business. So the lesson to be drawn from this is simply to evaluate your life. Once you've evaluated your life, be honest with yourself. Identify all the bad habits. Identify all the things that hold you back. And this is especially important in the beginning of your career. Because as I said, making money at that stage is just as much about the things you actively do as it is about the things that you don't do. So that means that you need to make sure that your inner state is allowing you to succeed. So make sure that your personal problems don't manifest in your business. Now, the next lesson you need to internalize is that you won't invest your way to riches. Now, I know that when I say that, all of the finance gurus will come after me. But here's the deal. I am not saying you shouldn't invest. You absolutely should. I started investing from a young age and I'm very happy I built those habits. My only regrets is that I didn't start investing sooner. But when you only have a few thousand dollars to your name, investing won't do anything for you. I mean, let's just simply break down the math. Even if you invest $3,000 into the market, you might make what? two to three hundred dollars back. And when it comes to investing, it's all about risk to reward. That means that you need to analyze your potential upside, how much money you can make versus what it actually costs you to lose that. And when you're looking at cost, you need to think in terms of how it will impact your life. So consider this, you should never invest more than you're willing to lose. And that means you cannot get blindsided by the upside. Now, some of you might be thinking, but if I invest into this altcoin, I can 2x, 4x, maybe even 20x my money. Because bear in mind, each time someone has that 20x increase in their portfolio, someone else had to hold those losses. For every winner that there is in investing, there is a loser. So beyond the fact that the odds are extremely low, let me explain something else to you. When you're not actively making money, your risk of losing that thousand or five thousand dollars or three thousand dollars, whatever it is you want to invest, is extremely high. Why? Well, because you don't know how to earn it back. So why would you invest the only money you have if you don't know how to actually make money? If you lost it, you wouldn't even know how to make it back. Instead, let's look at the alternative. If you invest just a fraction of that $5,000 into improving your skills, there's literally no limit as to how much you can earn. This is why you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in skills that can produce more money. Whether that means going to business seminars, public speaking events, or spending a thousand dollars learning how to code, whatever it is, anything that can make you more valuable in the marketplace will generate you more money. And those are the skills that are going to propel you to riches, not investing. You simply will not get lucky enough to turn a thousand dollars into a million dollars by investing. It won't happen. And honestly, even if by some miracle it did happen, you wouldn't be able to neither keep that million because you never earned it, nor multiply it because you wouldn't be the type of person that is worthy of that money and you would just self-sabotage. And that's the next reason why you can never invest your way into riches. Being rich is only half about the money. The latter half of it and the important half is about being the person to be able to earn it. 
So once you're making consistent money online, by all means, toss it into the S&P 500. Maybe even invest it into some alternative assets, maybe watches, maybe even go buy some cars, restore it, whatever you're into. But for now, just focus on what it actually takes to earn money. Realize that your best investment will always be yourself and your skills. And listen, whether it's a digital launchpad and you decide to spend 74 cents a day, not even a dollar a day for the best online education out there taught by the best mentors. So let's say you don't want to risk it and try it for a year. Let's say you just want to commit to one month, $37, the same amount of money you spend when you go to the cinema for two hours to watch some random bullshit. Whether you decide to go for the 40% discounted yearly digital launchpad plan or the monthly, whether you decide to get one of those or you spend $2,000 learning from a successful real estate agent just shadow him and telling them, hey, teach me all the tricks of the trade. How do I make $100,000 a year as a real estate agent? When you are first starting off and you're trying to become a millionaire, trying to become the person that can become a millionaire, there's no such thing as wasted money when you are investing in yourself. Because let's say you work with that coach for $2,000 and you even learn one thing. That one thing may not make you much money today, but in nine months, 18 months, 25 months, whatever it is, that one thing you learn will make you so much more money than you spent on the investment into the self-education itself. And as I said, no altcoin is ever gonna give you that because when you become the sort of person that can make a million dollars every single year consistently because you invested it in yourself to learn the skills in order to do so, no one can take that away from you. No market change, no bull run, bear run. Oh, crypto's pumping again. So now all of a sudden I'm not poor. Do you really wanna be that sort of person? Now, lesson four is one that people refuse to learn over and over. And Funnily enough, I even see it with some of my successful friends. They simply refuse to let go of the things they need to let go of. For some, it's TikTok. For some, it's bad friends. For others, it's bad diet. We all have those things. And that's why lesson four is you need to learn to break the shackles. You need to learn how to let go of everything that's holding you back. So let's just do a simple thought experiment. What if tomorrow you got rid of everything that's not serving you? And I mean absolutely everything. So that everything you did in your life was designed with one goal in mind, success. What would your life look like if you lived like that for just one month? Now, what if that month turned into a year? How much further along in your journey would you be? Because I'm gonna be honest, one year is all it takes to turn your life around completely. But it all starts with breaking those shackles today. And that means delete TikTok off your phone forever. Never download it again, unless you're making money with it. Now, don't just stop playing video games. Sell your console, go to some store, go to some pawn shop, go somewhere and just sell it. Even if it's cheap, you won't need it. Completely let go of it. You know those bad friends you have that keep dragging you down? Cut them off once and for all. Go to your kitchen right now and just throw away all the unhealthy shit, all of it. You don't need it. Whatever it is that is holding you back, let that shit go. Make the decisions you know you need to make once and for all. And then watch yourself propel to the next level. Burn all of those bad bridges and let them light your way. Now, the final lesson is one that I adopted very early on, but not because I wanted to, but because I needed to. Now, those of you who are familiar with my journey will know that let's just say that I was forced to be man of the house at a very young age. And in doing so, I had to make a promise. And so when I was 14 years old, I saw how badly my mom and I were struggling. And I promised her that no matter what it took, I would buy her her dream house and a Range Rover. And then nine years later, I bought her her dream house for $4 million in cash. And there's a Range Rover parked in front of it. So lesson five and the final lesson is to make a promise to someone you love. And this doesn't have to be done out of desperation like it was for me, but it needs to be someone you love so deeply that you couldn't even conceive of breaking the promise. And that's what gives the promise its meaning. But this isn't an ordinary promise though. As much as it's a promise to the person you tell it to, it's also a promise to yourself. It's a promise that you will achieve everything you set out to do, both for the person that you love and for yourself. Making that promise to yourself often just isn't enough. So make it to the person you love and yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, those are the five lessons that if you actually internalize, will set you on a path to becoming a millionaire in your 20s. The only thing that stands between you and that far-fetched goal now is a little bit of work. So get to it. And as always, I'll be watching from afar and I'm rooting for you.